go ahead and get started. Our top story today, House Republicans are touting their 400 page, page tax overhaul plan as a game changer for American families. But GOP lawmakers from high tax states are objecting to the elimination of state and local tax deductions. The plan cannot clear Congress without the backing of almost every Republican. The White House wants it passed by the end of the year. Montana's congressional delegation also offered its take on the Republican bill. Representative Greg Gianforte supports the bill. He says Montanans need tax relief and this plan does that. He says, quote, the plan allows Montanans to keep more of what they earn. A typical family of four earning $59,000 will receive $1,182 tax cut. Montana senior Senator Don Tester is part of the bill's next hurdle once it heads to the Senate. As it stands now, he's not buying it. He says we need real tax reform that seriously addresses our $20 trillion debt, not handouts to billionaires that are put on the nation's credit card. In other news, the search for the gunman in Wednesday's shooting at a Thornton, Colorado Walmart that killed three people is over. Police confirmed they arrested suspected shooter 47-year-old Scott Ostrom. They captured him after a short pursuit near his home after he got stuck in morning traffic. Police have not said if they know a motive for the random shooting. In state news, another turn in the ongoing debate over Montana's $227 million budget hole. As Republican House leaders say, any solution is far from settled. On Wednesday, Governor Steve Bullock's budget director said key lawmakers have tentatively agreed to a three-pronged framework to solve the budget crisis. One part spending cuts, one part tax increases, and one part budget transfers. But on Thursday, House Taxation Chairman Jeff Essman of Billings said he opposes any tax change he says if Congress passes national reform, that could mean more state tax revenue, so it's premature to act now. The Bullock administration says he's, it's still hoping a deal can be reached this month to avoid having to balance the budget entirely with spending cuts. While many Montanans are concerned about what the budget cuts will mean for health services across the state, about $105 million would be cut from the state's general fund, which would lead to $135 million lost in federal funds to health services. Thursday night was a chance to speak out. Could these services not be cut because, of, because I really need it? But that budget cut is going to take people out. We're as lean and as tight on everything else as we can possibly be. About 25 out of the 120 in attendance testified at the listening session against making cuts to the state budget. ARC Montana and Parents Let's Unite for Kids hosted the last four listening sessions across the state. They say case management, early intervention for children with disabilities, and optional dental for dentures would be eliminated. Eight legislators came to hear from constituents. There is still hope that the legislature and the governor can work together to find better ways to balance the budget. We need to balance the budget, but this is not the place to start. Tonight they are hearing from people who have disabilities, and they're hearing from family members whose loved ones have disabilities. State Senator Doug Carey asked for suggestions, including consolidating services where possible. The group did not like hearing that, and State Representative Kelly McCarthy said lawmakers from both parties are working together on the budget. Well, more than one year after a Sydney man was gunned down on the job, his killer is now headed to prison. 36-year-old Ray Hansen was sentenced on Thursday in Richland County District Court to 100 years at the Montana State Prison with no time suspended. Hansen admitted he shot and killed Terry Klein. Klein's family said they had never heard the name Ray Hansen until the day of the murder, and the family believes Terry Klein didn't know his killer either. Hansen entered a construction site in August of 2016 and climbed onto the excavator that Klein was operating. Klein was working to repair a breached irrigation canal when he was shot in the head without warning. Detectives determined the shooting was unprovoked and the victim likely did not see it coming. Hansen says he doesn't remember much from that day, and his defense attorneys blame Hansen's drug use for his actions, but Klein's family refuses to accept that excuse. Dad was the kind of guy that he was willing to help anyone. He was more or less the guy everybody could go to for, for any sort of advice. I don't believe you can, you can use the drugs as any kind of an excuse or explanation or reason for any of this. This is the kind of thing that if it's in you, it's in you. You know, maybe the drugs brought it out a little easier. 
Hampton's sentence has no parole restriction, meaning he could be granted parole in 25 years. Well, more, no, more snow is all the way for Billings, and that means the time for snow removal is quickly approaching. Over the summer, the city council agreed to spend money for residential plowing. That plowing will be contracted out and will begin the same time as normal city plowing, usually after the city receives three or four inches on the roads. Residential plowing will start on one end of town and work through the city, but after the next storm, plowing will start in a different section of town to keep things fair. Private contractors will plow all residential roads with the exception of private roadways. Residents are asked to move their vehicles off the roads when it snows to help the plows do their job. Also, residents are reminded that the snow will be plowed to the sides of the streets as the contractors will not be responsible for snow removal. So